Hi, welcome back to my channel. I hope you'll join me today to paint this pink floral watercolor teacup. Today I'm using my Simi Art and Sonnet watercolors. I have my watercolor palette handy. I'm using a size six intuition round brush. I have two jars of water, one for rinsing my dirty brush and the other for actually painting. I have a clean cloth for dabbing up any mistakes or puddles. And finally, today I'm using B Paper Company's 300 GSM watercolor paper, and I've just punched that with my three and a half inch Recollections round punch. You can use whatever you have. This would make an adorable card or a small frame dart, even a large frame dart. Let's get started. Okay, I am just in love with doing these little uh, teacup floral bouquets where I just have these florals coming out of a teacup. I like the other things too, the pictures and whatnot, but I have been having so much fun with these. So I have all these little, I think they're like three inch circles and I just pre-cut them from regular watercolor paper actually, just with a, with a big punch. just am feeling like my the way that this water is acting for a second made me think that maybe I was using the the reverse side but because it seemed like it was repelling just a little uh, but I'm not I'm using the the proper side so um, if you're new to watercolor one one thing to kind of pay attention to especially if you're cutting your paper but even if you're just removing it from your pad is that it's very easy to get the wrong side and you can paint on both sides actually so they just they do different things and give different looks and there's less texture or tooth on the reverse side um, and you know I personally really just love all this yummy texture um, on the proper side, but all that to say, um, you know, just check because sometimes you can have things that seem like they're not working out. The bleeds are not the same and whatnot. And you could easily get really frustrated over something that is really not a, an ability issue. <laughs> you know, it's not, you're not doing a bad job or you know blending poorly or anything like that sometimes if you're just using the wrong side of the paper it could kind of uh, mess with you so so be aware so I just brushed in all that water and then I'm just uh, with my lavender pigment my lavender watercolor I am brushing in around this cup and I'm trying to be quick so that I can blend it real nicely. Not overly blended. I don't want it perfect. I actually like some texture, but I thought that this would just be such a cute little gift tag. I think it would be really cute on a gift bag or whatever. So. That is my goal today. And I'm a little out of breath because y'all, it is hot. And <laughs> how much do I say that on my videos? But it is hot. I live in West Texas. It's insane here right now. And, uh, and I've been outside doing all manner of things and, uh, so yeah, I'm just, I'm feeling it. My body is like, we are not as young as we used to be. So just getting all this pigment in there, just kind of squiggling it in and kind of re-wetting up here, get this all blended. This is curling quite a bit, no worries. It doesn't matter if it, if it stays kind of curled. Uh, the only thing 
that really I care about that, you know, I have to kind of watch. When I do these circles, when I, when I do wet on wet anyway, I kind of have to watch that my water and pigment are not just rolling off um, because obviously it's round and, um, and it's, this is very small. And so, you know, it really can just roll off there. So I just watch that, you know, it's not a big deal and not a deal breaker. There, are, there are ways to deal with this. And honestly, I could spray my paper, put it on a plastic or acrylic palette, and that would hold my paper and allow me the time to work wet and uh you know if i had thought about that before i got started i might actually have done that i'm i don't always do all those extra little things but i actually might would have done that so maybe i'll do it next time but i haven't painted one of these rounds in a while and something just told me today paint one of those and Keep it handy for a little gift tag. Okay, don't worry about that border. It doesn't matter. It's not perfect. See, you can see it's definitely, definitely closer down here. It's okay. No, no one that, no one that I'm going to give this to is going to um, think critically of that. <laughs> and no one that you would give one to would think critically of that. And if they did, you know, let me just say the thing that, you know, moms and grandmas should say. That's their problem. So, so there you go. Um, I want to do in this handle real quick, real quickly. And you'll see that I did not erase away my, uh, my lines, my pencil lines. For this teacup and that's because I've discovered that with this background you really do not have to it's really okay and um, it does not it's not visible it doesn't detract so if uh, if you're like me you might just want to leave it and I'm just trying to get a little more little more texture out here just a few more places and I like that really well okay and you can see too that my teacup itself is not perfect it's you know a rough little drawing and it's totally fine it doesn't have to be perfect so I'm just going to add while this is a little bit wet down here just a a little tiny bit of a shadow just a hint and really I'm I'm kind of doing this as a way to test the uh, I guess the dryness of my background just to kind of get an idea and it does seem to be fairly dry maybe a little too dry. I had maybe forgotten that I wanted to add in some, some little uh, background greenery and various things here. So I'm just dampening that lightly it's very easy to do this and push pigment out and I'm not too worried since I am putting pigment into this but if I caught it maybe moments earlier I would not be I wouldn't be concerned about that but see even that it you know it ends up kind of looking nice so it's interesting anyway so I just want to add some some leaves I guess this is just some background greenery and let those kind of bleed 
just let them kind of do their magic. I don't want to do too much of that because I do want, um, I want to leave some places for when I use my, uh, my pink, my Matter Lake. So I'm just going to leave that and I'm going to go ahead and go in with my Matter Lake Red. And, you know, just bits of it and not trying to be symmetric. I'm not, um, I'm not necessarily going for uh, things that would match, <clears throat> excuse me, match on both sides. I actually try to avoid that. Okay, now these are just essentially going to create some background texture and depth, and so, you know, this is not uh, anything that, you know, it matters what it's doing, anything like that. It just kind of is there, it's things peeking out, and, and just kind of being behind the scenes a little bit. I want to let that dry. So fun. While that's drying, I'll go ahead and work on my teacup. <clears throat> so I just want to wet this down. And I'm just wetting inside the cup itself. And I'm starting on that left side. That's where I'll also start my pigment. And it, it makes sense to start on the side when you're working with a dimensional object anyway. If you start on the side where you'll start your pigment, then that allows that to be really the darker side. And, and then you can blend to the other side. At least that's my... That's kind of how I do it. And that's black. <laughs> we don't want that. <laughs> I thought, well, my goodness, that is dark. <laughs> okay, let's go in the Payne's Gray. Those colors are very similar in this palette. They look very similar. And then see, just brushing down that side doesn't have to take the entire bit. In fact, you know, little bits of that outer part can can kind of stay. It gives it kind of a, a loose look when we do that. And I just want to go in this side and blend. And then I'm going to take a little more of this gray. And then I like to take a little bit across the top and you can be kind of random about this because uh, you may have some some of those florals may dip in front of your teacup and if that's the case they'll create a little shadow there too so I'm not trying to be perfect about this shadow Now on the handle, I want the shadow to be in the lower part of this top curve and then the low part here. And maybe a little strip right there.
And now, honestly, that may not be quite enough since the rest of that cup is so dark. So let's blend this a little. And I'm actually not, I'm actually not really blending it. I did a couple of brush strokes. And my reason for that is to allow a little bit of uh, shininess. And I'll come back and darken that up with a little more shadow. I think I would have liked it if I had not had quite uh, the tinge of gray still on my cup when I had done this side. I'd like it to be a little more white, but it is what it is. And it's really fine like this. And I think in the future, I would probably rinse my brush a bit more. I kind of goofed in that I did not get fresh water between my last painting in this. I'm, I'm working with um, some of the water that I just already had on hand. Okay, so now I've taken just some very pigmented um, watercolor here and I'm dotting my little these flowers that I like to do and I'm just dotting these centers they're kind of like imperfect ovals used they're kind of dotty and jaggedy and then I'm taking my brush that I have rinsed and then dragged across the side and I'm just brushing these petal shapes into here and what I love about this is having these other colors in the background the blue and the green and even the matter lake which is what I'm using for these florals it just gives this such depth so just brushing in those. And if you see a flower that just really does not have enough, this one right here, I might want to come back and add some, uh, some pigment into where I've brushed those, uh, those petals. It's totally fine to do that. I love the way that these pigments react together for this particular style anyway. I feel like they just, they really, um, they really give this style that I like, this, uh, they give a look that I like. And this red and the, the lavender, which I would call a periwinkle, they there's a granulation that happens and that could easily be something that you would not want in a painting but I um, I really like it sometimes in these even though it does you know for some reason it makes my it makes this matter lake a bit more granulated in uh, in the painting but I think it's really quite interesting so I don't fret over it and I am adding some more of this pigment in here not tons and just trying to keep it rather soft still and I love this I want to take a bit of my my olive green and a tiny bit of my dark brown. I'm just going to mix that over here and uh, and I'll use that for these uh, additional greens that I do. just so that it's enough different from that, um, from that 
true olive. I do want this to be kind of a light wash of it, which can be kind of tricky. And I, I want to watch out for my um, pinks, this matter lake red, because I don't want to bleed a ton, really maybe, you know, much at all. Just watching out for that. Okay, I like that. Just keeping that really light. And I will often, when I do these leafy stems like this, I will often do two at a time. They don't have to be done in twos, but I tend to like it. Sometimes even threes. This is so fun. And it's just turning out so cute. Oh gosh. So easy too, really. Okay, get a couple of little stems in here or something. Oh, that just bled a ton. And I do not want that. And I think it would be okay, but I'm just going to go ahead and, yeah, dab that back. Okay, pay attention to how wet your painting is, kids. Don't be like me. And then just some, you know, little stems, just kind of here and there. I actually think I would like to add some more of these olive leaves. Nice, yeah, I like that. And just overlap some with these greens behind there. Here we go. Everything does not have to make sense. Okay, I like it real well. I'm going to do maybe a couple more of these leaves. I'm not sure where. I don't know. Maybe it's good like that. Or maybe just a tiny, super, super light, hardly pigmented at all leaf back there. Yeah, I like that. I like those.
Yes, cute. I like that a lot. And I don't think I need to add any shadows up here. I think that's all good. And like I said, I there is something about this granulation here that I'm, I just, I'm completely there for that. And I know that I have done some similar flowers and that has bothered me, that granulation. It is not bothering me today. And, uh, and in fact, in a, another recent painting that I did, I just really liked it. I think it's a, I think it's a really interesting thing that it does. And it, to me, just makes this even a little more abstract, which y'all know it's hard for me. But what a delightful painting today, honestly. It's exactly what I needed. I'm just adding in a bit of shadow here. Want this to be nice and loose. more of it over to this side I would say and I'll just take a tiny bit of Payne's Gray and just kind of brush that around real loosely and then let it do its thing. I like that. I want a little more shadow on this handle Again, I don't think those have to be perfect. That's not entirely the look I'm going for. There's just some perfect. I like this really loose. Um, yeah, really uh, just, gosh, I don't know. It's just extra sweet that it's so feels easy. I'm just blending a little more shadow in over here. Kind of going in and roughly blending that with the rest of the cup but leaving some little places. So maybe I get a little bit of glistening over here, but I'm just gonna call that delightfully done. Gosh, so much fun today. I hope you had fun if you painted this along with me. And if you didn't, I sure hope you save this one and paint it and let me know how it goes. As always, happy painting.